We're in the midst of a low-cost self-built revolution. And again. We're gonna have a house. It's harder than ever to get onto the housing ladder. So a few brave, ordinary people are resorting to the seemingly impossible. I'm bend it. Oh, okay. Building their own home from scratch for less than a hundred thousand pounds. It's kind of scary how quickly the money's going. I'm Kieran Long, and with architect Piers Taylor, we're coming to the aid of six families attempting this toughest of challenges. That's Boeing in the middle there. I, would, I wouldn't poke no, no, no. We'll try to help them with design dilemmas. Hey, stop there. Why wouldn't you want to make that change? Challenge them to think bigger. There's just so much to look at. Just kind of soaking it all in. And search out innovative solutions that make the most of their meagre budgets. Ooh, look at that. We'll all be pushed to the limit. We can't afford to stop. As we attempt to turn these ordinary self-builds into outstanding homes. Wow, this is amazing. This time, Heidi and Stephen attempt to build a house for just £70,000. What we've got is what we've got. But we're juggling family life. No. <sighs> and problems with the build. It wasn't that people had given us the wrong information. It was because we didn't ask the right questions. Leave their home unfinished and their dream in tatters. Basically, we've got about 10 grand left. I'm in Scotland, about 12 miles from Inverness, but stunning landscapes like these sometimes come with a stunning price tag. But people who grew up in these areas want to come back and put down roots. I'm off to meet a couple who have got exactly this problem. My family have been in this area since I was two. They knew it was a great place to kind of grow up and it's the same things that I enjoyed as a child that I want my own children to have. I just can't see how we would be happy anywhere else, to be honest. Go a wee bit. Seven years ago, Heidi and Stephen returned to the Highlands from Glasgow with plans to settle long term. They're yeah. renting locally, but can't afford to buy. So the only option to have a home of their own is to build one from scratch. We need, obviously, need a home for our family. We want to live close to my mum and dad. Yeah. And plus, yeah. actually, if we tried to buy a house with that space, we couldn't afford it. We just couldn't afford it. So when the dilapidated house next door to Heidi's parents came on the market, it was an opportunity the couple couldn't pass up. The property that we bought originally was a two-bedroom cottage, and that property had to be done something with. It was empty. It wasn't... It had rats in it. Over the last month, we've got the roof off. Next stage, I'll have the joyous task of demolishing the internal chimney. After paying 65K for the plot, there's a total of just £70,000 left for the entire build. Heidi and Stephen put in their savings, but to raise the rest, Heidi's parents have taken the brave step of remortgaging their own home. It can't fail because it's so tied into everybody's finances that the whole family will massively suffer and we could lose my mum and dad's house. And that is horrendous. That is quite a stress because I know ultimately that's my side of the deal. I've got to manage the money. And if I don't get that right, it's, it's a big deal. It's two weeks since they knocked down the old house and I want to find out how they intend to construct a new one for just £70,000. Hi guys. Hi there. How are you? Good, thank you. Good, nice thank to you. see you. And I can see why you want to build a house in this location. This is an amazing spot, isn't it? It is. I know. We're, we're very fortunate. I think we're a bit spoilt, frankly. It's just, it's a lovely place to live. I'm originally from down in Glasgow and I just fell in love with the place. This is where I'm going to grow old and hopefully never, never move again. It's a beautiful sight. But what kind of family home can they hope to build here on their tight budget? This side of the house 
will have the open plan uh, living room and kitchen dining room. We went for a living dining kitchen area because family life all sort of centres yep. around eating and keeping an eye on the kids and the kids running around. Yep. So this is just one big space that we can share. These novice builders have come up with the design of the house themselves. They're planning a two-storey timber-framed house with dormer windows. Downstairs is their main living and dining area, the heart of their home, plus a TV room, utility room, and the only bathroom in the house. A closed-in staircase leads to three bedrooms upstairs. One gives the only access to a large storage cupboard housing the hot water tank. It's small and compact, but even building this for just £70,000 is going to be extremely tough. Is money going to be a challenge? Oh yeah, definitely. It's going to be a challenge, but there isn't another magic pot of mm. money. What we've got is what we've got. And it's not just the budget that's an issue. One of the, the challenges is trying to put our personality into the house. Uh, we can't really do much of that on the outside, but certainly we've got the inside of the house to, to play with. With a very basic design and pressure on finances, I need peers to interrogate their plans to see if we can help. Hello. How nice are you doing? You. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So an amazing spot. I mean, truly spectacular. Thank you very much. Heidi and Stephen designed their new home, but already feel it doesn't suit their needs. One of the thing that doesn't work with this design is that we don't have a bathroom upstairs. Mm. I mean, because that's a funny recess of space, isn't it? Mm. That space there um, has a hot water tank mm. in it. Perhaps there's going to be bits mm. of storage that we can fit around there. So, But in theory, that could be a bathroom, you know. If it was me, I would definitely cut my stairs back to there and start the mm -hmm. stairs earlier. And what that gives you the potential of in the future is bringing a door in there. That could be a shower room. I totally agree with you, because that seems like a very simple thing that can mm. be done. Mm -hmm. Now he wants to tackle the enclosed staircase in the middle of the downstairs plan. This area here, which is the bottom of the stairs, needs to work harder. And I think not to make that a wall, but to make that part of the living space. It mm -hmm. can be a post and a lintel across and still be load-bearing above. Yeah. Opening that up makes this room feel bigger again. It makes the staircase less dark as well. It makes the staircase yeah. a lot less dark. Heidi and Stephen have a modest 104 square metres of usable space. So Piers wants them to think outside the four walls and start designing the space beyond. The drama of the landscape is so immense that I would be wondering, how can I maximise mm -hmm. that? If this is your kitchen here, mm -hmm. you know, and this is your deck, in summertime, when these doors are, you know... Permanently open. Permanently open. Your living territory is a third as much again. Yeah. You know, then I would make those all steps, you yes. know, going down so you could sit on the edge. But I, I would be imagining how can I actually make that an outside living space mm. that I could, on a night like this, just decide to cook outside. Yeah, and yeah, I could, yeah. You could have like to be the brick belt barbecue. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The poetry of how you live in a landscape like this are so simple in some ways, because all it needs is, you know, actually a piece of deck and a bit yeah. of kitchen. Moving the staircase back would allow for direct access from an enlarged landing into the room that could become a much needed upstairs bathroom. Finding a way to remove the wall next to the staircase would bring light into the stairwell and living room and increase the sense of space on the ground floor. And extending the kitchen out onto the deck would expand the usable area of the house and take advantage of the amazing view. Piers has come up with lots of potential design changes, but Heidi and Stephen need to make decisions fast. That's it. Okay. Just 10 days later, the timber frame is going up and local builder Richard has joined Stephen on site to help with the work. It's definitely a, definitely a two-man job with somebody that knows a lot more about it than, than I do. Get a lot, a lot more done with the two of us. Stephen works full-time as a tree surgeon, but he's spending every spare moment on the build. Machinery here that I'm not used to, 
more cautious of the nail gun than I am of a chainsaw. There have been some big decisions following Piers' visit, particularly on the side wall of the staircase. Originally in the design, the, the wall would come right here solid, so it would be enclosed on both sides. So what Piers suggested was having this open and having a post here, so then we can have more light coming into the stairs and into the living room. And we're still just to decide on how we're going to finish that opening off. Heidi and Stephen have already spent £29,000 on the frame and foundations. They need to save every penny if they're to bring the build in on their 70k budget. So they need to recycle and reuse materials where possible. What I've got here is all the roof joists from the old house and we're going to be using this as the, the frame for our decking. We're, we're not really planned exactly how the decking's going to be. Uh, but we've certainly got enough wood to, to get quite a large space outside. With new decking starting at about £13 per square metre, this could add up to a significant saving. But Stephen's resourcefulness and ambition are soon tested by the Scottish weather. A month later, he's desperately trying to get the structure watertight without success. We've had gale force winds, uh, amber storm warnings up here, uh, flooding, and uh, some heavy rain as well. Yesterday was probably the worst weather we've had throughout the build. It was a bit windy putting the gable ends up, which was a bit hairy at some points, but uh, we can't afford to stop. It's tough going but I'm worried they could miss the opportunity to make the most out of this small house and its surroundings. I want to try to help Heidi and Stephen start to think about design beyond the footprint of the house they're building. They've been in the depths of trying to get the thing up, but the most important aspect of the house is that beautiful view and the beautiful landscape. I'm going to show them a house today that I think elegantly and beautifully solves the problem of how to connect inside and outside using just a few elegant architectural techniques. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> Spacious. Yeah, it feels really, it just feels really, really light. It might be in the centre of a city rather than a rural landscape, but architects Mikhail Riches have redesigned the back of this terraced house in West London to cleverly extend the living area. The main reason I wanted to show you this is, though, because of the way that it links this beautiful room and some really usable outdoor space with level thresholds, with obviously large areas of floor-to-ceiling glazing and that continuous surface of the same material. Pebble resin flooring inside and out, like this, costs from around £60 per square metre. Here it creates one continuous sweep, leading the eye to the exterior. Makes you feel like you're outside while you're using yeah. this room. Yeah, it's very interesting. What we are looking at at the moment is polished concrete all in the ground floor. Mm. But I have also thought about, mm. would it be nice to have concrete? going all the way out. Mm. But I think what's really important, regardless of what we do, is that we get the level, that sense that you're not going down or up. Mm -hmm. Eliminating the threshold as much as you can is really important, mm -hmm. I think. Mm. Here, the architects and the owners built up the level of the garden quite significantly. It's kind of interesting to be standing in this space, because although it's quite tight, mm. proportionally, it's all about that idea that you can sort of be outside while cooking or, or mm -hmm. being on the phone or whatever it might be. I think what's interesting here is just how much effort you see they've gone to to try to create that continuity. Even when there's a glass facade in the way, this stone worktop continues outside, mm -hmm. giving you some usable kind of barbecue station or something out there. Granite worktops similar to this cost from around £200 per square metre. Just like the flooring, this one has been used to create the illusion of one continuous space, along with other techniques. The colour is used on the units inside and out and on the wall. Yeah. And there's like lots and lots of effort, I think, to kind of try to break down the, the boundary between inside and outside. The budget for remodelling this house was far more than Heidi and Stephen can spend. But it's a design idea which I hope they'll embrace. 
here to try to describe some of these ideas to us, getting to see them really, really helped. Mm -hmm. One of the things that is quite good to be able to see there is how they continued the units mm -hmm. outside, and that's something we will have to think about, how we can maybe continue the kitchen island kind of going out into uh, the outside yeah. as well. Yeah, I think having it as one space rather than two separate spaces, certainly that's the feeling I got in there, it was, it was just one space. It's December, and two months since the frame went up. The underfloor heating and windows are in, and the roof is almost complete. But costs are spiralling, and over £50,000 of the 70 k budget has already been spent. Completing everything else for just 20 k is going to be impossible. And to make matters worse, there's been a totally unexpected blow to the schedule and budget. Aiming for a cheap and durable floor, Heidi and Stephen have attempted to create a concrete one themselves. I've seen it on the telly and thought, oh, that looks lovely, that looks nice and easy. Concrete floor, that seems straightforward. But their DIY efforts backfired. It wasn't that people had given us the wrong information, it was because we didn't ask the right questions. The delivery driver was only meant to be there 35 minutes and he kept on saying to us, oh, he's only got an hour left before this, the concrete starts to set in the machine. And if, it's, if that's the case, I'm just dumping it at the front door. And we weren't even halfway down the house with getting the concrete out. And we were also charged a pound a minute. And he was there about two and a half hours over his allotted time. After the rush to get in, the concrete set unevenly, leaving them with an undulating floor which varies in places by up to four centimetres in height. We've ended up with um, a bit of a lumpy floor. Yeah, it's about 23 mil there as well. But we're grinding that down mm -hmm. um, and we're hoping it will be able to be fixed. It's going to take a lot of time and effort to, to get it pretty level so our builder can get internal walls downstairs because at the moment he just doesn't have the levels to, to get any internal walls in. It's delayed the whole build by two months and had a big impact on their finances. Tool hire plus materials for fixing the floor have cost well over a thousand pounds, more than doubling what the couple budgeted. And Stephen is now spending every night grinding down the huge volume of concrete floor. After a long day at work, coming home, it's cold, it's dark. It's hard to get yourself motivated to do it. Yeah, it's just uh, fun. <laughs> with added pressure on their build schedule and budget, Piers now needs to come up with low-cost solutions that will have a big impact on this build and help them move forward. Hi Heidi, hi Stephen, how you doing? Hi Piers, not bad Hi. Wow, the house. Yes. It's beautiful. It may be beautiful, but with many costs underestimated, the finished house is now expected to come in at £84,000. To continue the build, Heidi and Stephen will have to eke out money from their wages. Even so, the projected cost per square metre is still low. 80 something grand for a house that's 100 and something square metres is, you know, really tall order. I mean, almost no one builds for less than a thousand pounds a square metre, mm -hmm. you know, ever. Despite the pressures on the budget, all the hard work attempting to fix the concrete floor seems to be paying off. This side of the house is pretty much done, mm -hmm. and then it's basically bringing back the, the grinding machine to, to get the smooth finish. You can see the finish. If you look over mm, yeah. over here, it's going to look really mm. beautiful. You'll be able to see. Mm. It's very really nice. Yeah, very nice. So that's what it looks like. The concrete floor created a huge headache, but the decision to lose the wall between the staircase and living area is already looking promising. For me, it feels really exciting that you've taken this wall out. And, you know, previously, your eye would have stopped here. and This would have been the boundary to the space, whereas now it's you know, a metre over mm -hmm. here, which I think is great. And also just this sense of coming downstairs, seeing the view, you know, incorporating some of that upstairs into the downstairs, those sorts of things, I think, have been really successful. A 
conventional wooden handrail and spindles for a staircase could quickly tot up to well over 100 pounds, and the sky's the limit for more adventurous designs. Piers wants to explore ways of doing something unconventional and exciting on a modest budget. You've got this Douglas fir post, your ceiling is there. Now what I want to sort of focus on is this thing here can do anything you want, mm -hmm. you know, and it could be the most beautiful, delicate steel rods that just, you know, enclosed that gap. Could you not just have, instead of having this handrail here, not have a handrail and maybe just have something that would fill in this gap and be all different angles, perhaps? That's a nice idea. That's and then you nicer, wouldn't have nicer, that totally breaking up nicer. your eye. You know, that is a really beautiful idea. You know, then you don't need a handrail at all. You have one handrail, one handrail on the other side. And then this is just a spider's web. You know, it's not a handrail at all. There's very, very fine three mil tensioned wires in a web. And then it's delicate enough that you look through it. When you're saying about the tensioned wires, I'm not always so keen on, the, yeah. on that kind of metallic finish. I mean, you could use nylon rope for that. It's fun and quirky and cheap. Yes. yes. I mean, you can build this whole thing for 50 quid, probably, out of, you know... Which is a lot better than a handrail made out of steel that you'd have to get bespokely made. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. With the concept agreed, they'll develop the design further to ensure it complies with the building regulations that ensure safety. Next, Piers wants to hear the current thinking about the plan to extend the kitchen and living space onto the deck. I know recently you went to look at that amazing house in London that has that fantastic outside kitchen. What did you think of that? I liked some of the elements of it. I liked the fact that you had that one level that went mm, mm, the kitchen yeah. and out. But, but to be honest, it felt a bit strange, mm, though. Mm, you don't really have a kitchen outside. Mm, um, mm, I like the idea mm, of having the sense of living outside, yeah. but not actually the kitchen. Because we will do stuff outside, but we'll just cook it in there and then take it out yeah. or put a barbecue on. So Heidi's been working on an alternative plan for the kitchen. It will define the whole ground floor of their family home. So show me, Heidi, where the kitchen is now. We've got this island, we've got this row here. I think that's probably enough cabinets. And in my mind, I haven't got anything on the wall. Mm -hmm. I haven't got any wall cabinets. And a lot of would be to naturally stick some up. But I think if I put them up, I'm gonna make the room feel smaller. I think you're right, actually. I wouldn't have any cupboards up there. Keep everything at low level, which means that, you know, you can chuck stuff in the sink and not see it mm -hmm. and not have a sense that you're sitting in a kitchen. Yeah. Ditching wall units will maximize the feeling of space on the ground floor. The challenge now is to ensure this part of the house reflects their character and isn't dominated by a cheap, off-the-peg kitchen. What Heidi and Stephen could do now is just finish the house in the most conventional way and just go to their local DIY superstore and buy off-the-shelf things for everything. But it won't be beautiful and special and interesting. And they don't want a really flashy house, but it needs to be theirs, and it is a bespoke house. And what Heidi and Stephen need to do is find a strategy for getting what they want and spending no more than they would if they went down to their local DIY outlet. We've got to inspire them with ideas on how to achieve this on their dwindling funds and within their compact footprint. Heidi and Stephen are just at the point of their build where they're beginning to think now about the interior and how they're going to inhabit this space they've created. That's really exciting, but before they get into that, I want to show them a building that makes really inventive use of every square metre of a very constrained site. In fact, you could say that this house is a, makes a virtue out of necessity. It is a product of its constraints, and I think that's one that's really going to give them loads of ideas to take back to Scotland. This house in North London was designed by Nicholas Kirk Architects. It's squeezed into the tiny plot between two existing properties, but actually has almost the same square footage as Heidi and Stephen's home. So you can see just how constrained this site is, four and a half metres wide, the whole site, and tapering too. But it's quite a robust and I think quite welcoming space and that combined with all of the light that's coming of course from this double height window it's a fantastic combination isn't it even yeah. though it's not yeah. a massive space it's mm -hmm. got a great quality. Oh I love it I really love it I think what I really noticed immediately was there's the concrete floor it's not pristine it's not over polished you know this is a proper kitchen where people actually cook. The architect and owner have injected functionality and personality the worktop was made by the owner for £400, 
and the unique splashback is a remainder of vintage wallpaper covered with a glass sheet. Every inch of this small space is utilised. Each nook and cranny, each bit of wall, the whole depth is used for storage. And I quite like the way this piece of furniture is just flush with the wall. And there's a little open part here where you see the edge of the plywood. I really, really like it because what they've done is practically hidden stuff, but kind of made something of this kind of interest of the, the book. By minimising expensive fittings, the architect has designed a cheap, elegant kitchen. So There's it's no fussy handles. stuff, no handles. I mean, oh, that's, that's yeah. really good. And I think plywood is such a nice material, isn't it, too, mm. you, when, when you see those, those edges. The least obvious of spaces have been used to great effect. It's always interesting because it doesn't look much, but there's some, I think, interesting tricks here. Just using the depth of the wall. This is quite useful stuff, isn't it? Well, this is exactly the kind of idea that we want kind of in our entranceway. And this is a really simple way of doing it, where you don't have to make a big deal about it It's being not a cupboard. cupboard. That's no. really important. It's just a, wee nook, isn't it? it's it's just a wee... bit of the wall, and this can be for whatever. And even here, you've got really useful storage built into the staircase. It's just really handy. Yep. The stairs at the back of the property could have been the darkest part of the house. I mean, just look how much light is flooding in from this slot window. It must have been a lot of effort to do that and expense, but it, somehow, for me, it's just really works. It's paid off. Yeah, it's turned this into something that's an actual space, a room, almost. Mm. The £700 balustrade is simple but fun, and the house is packed with practical design ideas that make the most of the small footprint. In the living room, built-in storage is constructed out of inexpensive plywood. This low unit was made by the owner for £180. These are not pieces of furniture they bought and put against a wall, it's all yeah. integrated. And it doesn't have a cluttered feel about it at all, even though there is a lot of stuff in here. And this is a very family home. And you can feel that in this space, you feel cosy. I can tell you feel quite warm about this place. You seem to really respond to it. What is it about it that you like? I mean, it's beautiful, yes, but that's not its key thing. It's practical. And that's what I really like about it. And that's how, you know, we're designing our home. Splashes of colour add personality throughout the house at very little cost. This is sort of how I'd like to see our house. This house shows the character of the people that live here and that's what we'd really like to bring through in our house. I mean, they've used some really good ideas that, you know, we'd really like to take away and, you know, have a go at mm -hmm. ourselves, I think. Heidi and Stephen seem to get a lot out of today and I really enjoyed spending time with them in a really interesting, intricate work of architecture. The challenge, though, is whether they can realise their ambitions with the same kind of elegance and economy that this place has. Down you go. Down. A crocodile? It looks like a big hole in a box. It looks like a crocodile. Oh, it looks like a crocodile. By May, seven months into the build, enthusiasm is understandably fading. Heidi is struggling to run her consultancy business, be a wife and mother, and project manage the build. Every day, we've got to do all the things that you have to do in ordinary family life. And then on top of that, try and find the energy and the time to get on with the, the house build, when it feels like it's been going on forever. Mm. I feel really worn out at the moment. Um, physically, mentally. I'm, I'm making mistakes left, right and centre. I'm forgetting things. Go and take your shoes off in there now, Dorothy. No, listen. Which isn't like me. I'm just usually just really quite organised and I'm not enjoying that. So when you start to make mistakes and stuff, then you start to, to doubt your ability to do it. And that's not a pleasant place to be. They've now spent 90K, well over their original budget. As well as funding the build with their wages, a friend is bailing out the project with a loan. Stephen, too, is worn out by the relentless demands on his time. It was hard to begin with, and it's, it's getting harder as the bill goes on, because obviously we're more and more tired now, because I've not had a break since Christmas. Come and get your teeth done now. Come on. Who's driving the fire engine? Is it goat? Yeah. Oh. Ah. 
Right, good night. With the need to limit further spending as much as possible. No, I'm not pulling all that out, Heidi. I do need to see what's. You need not to tonight. Heidi has sourced secondhand units free from friends. She wants to use them as the basis for the new kitchen. So what's that like? Some sort of thin cabinet? Yes. So there's so you like have to remember, we need to put all this back. Uh, Stephen, it doesn't so. stop me needing to know what's there, dear. <clears throat> well, we could as always as, do that when they As need much to come as, out. like, you might want to not move it, I don't want to design a kitchen and then find I don't have those units. So if we just move some of them over here, there's one over one, here. One, two, well. three, four, four, five, six hanging wall so, units. Well, but that would make seven, that one, that you're uh, the dirty one. Without taking all of this out, Heidi, I can't really tell for sure. I totally appreciate that, it's annoying, but... No, it's not annoying, Heidi, it's impractical to do this right now. I'm not pulling all this out, no way. Heidi and Stephen are at the end of their tether. And with all they're going through, I want to find out if they've any money left to even finish the build. What is the state of the budget? How much has it cost you so far and where are you? Basically, we've got about 10 grand left. That doesn't feel like a lot. Well, the way you did raise the, the money to buy the land and to, to build the house is by borrowing it. We had to go on my mum and dad's mortgage and remortgage the house. They'd effectively so, paid, nearly paid the whole thing off and we had to put them on a massive amount of debt. <laughs> so, and ourselves. The thing that I stop, don't try and think about too much. I just look at it as a project and keep going because otherwise you would just be overwhelmed. With just 10K to finish the house, it's crucial that Piers comes up with design ideas for the interior that add personality at a very low cost. A lot needs to happen in the downstairs of Heidi and Stephen's house for it to work as a really good family living space. Effectively, it's just one room. And I'm worried that the kitchen will dominate because I think what they're doing is just putting a normal kitchen in. I want to really encourage them to actually still be bold and still hang on to this sense that the house can be really exciting. So here's our, uh, our lovely kitchen. Here it is. Yeah. Some of it. And it has seen better days, hasn't it? Yeah. That is a kitchen that you would only choose to offend nobody but to please no one either. That's, yeah. <laughs> that, that's, yeah. The cupboards themselves are fine, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, the question is, how do these work as a cohesive whole in that room? Yeah. How do these do more than just be kitchen cupboards? And the biggest challenge is perhaps the island. Yeah. You know, how do you make a beautiful island that is a kind of dramatic piece of furniture out of these? Because the main brief for that space is that it doesn't feel too kitchen-like. Mm -hmm. And what money do you have associated with turning this into something that works as a kitchen? Ah, uh, some, <laughs> some money? <laughs> a couple, a few hundred quid. You'll magically infuse us with wonderful well, I'm not, ideas. I'm not sure I can magically <laughs> do it, but I do have something in the car I want to go and get and show you. Oh, sounds good. Excellent. Yeah? Good, I'm going to go and get it. The conventional approach to reviving units Ooh. is a lick of paint or new doors. But Piers has a more inventive solution, acrylic sheets, which can be bought in a huge range of colours and finishes. That would definitely not be the colour I would go with. Are you looking no. for something more subtle? I think architects love lime green. Yeah. yeah. This is a kind of aqua blue. That's lush. I like the matte. This yeah. is matte, one side. It's nice. I like, yeah, I like that, I like that. I'm thinking that, you know, you could knock up this island in some really cheap stud work, and this gets effectively glued onto the face of it. The front okay. of the island and the, the fronts of the cupboards that you yeah. see behind the island. Mm -hmm. And for splashbacks and things like that. Interesting. I suppose I feel the rest of that space is very simple and this is the jewel that sits in it, you know, and it's also the thing that zones and separates the kitchen proper from the living space. So it's a kind of, it's an important thing. It's not just the kitchen that needs fresh ideas. Heidi and Stephen want to create an eye-catching design for the side of the staircase. Piers has an ingenious plan for using low-cost materials and he's brought Heidi to a local marina. And... 
There's a kind of richness to the way that boats and so on use material that I really like. And for me, it goes way beyond what you can get at a conventional builder's merchant. And I think for me as an architect, you know, these are the places that I often come to to look for inspiration. You can get things in marinas and chandleries that you can't get anywhere else. Those tension wires with those nice turnbuckles. So this is what I wanted to show you, Heidi. Mm -hmm. This nylon braid. So theoretically, these could be used strong enough to do what we want them to do. Absolutely. Here we are. Your favourite colour. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know, it might tie in with the kitchen. I like that, that kind of like... Um, the dullest, most I like the dullest. doer, most doer colour here. This stuff is amazingly strong. I mean, this has an incredible breaking strain. That is one pound something a metre. The thicker it is, the more expensive it is. Mm. So this is, you know, what's that, seven mil or something, and that's about... Four pounds thirty-nine a meter, so it's kind of four times as expensive as something like that, and that's you know that's well over specified for what you need it for. Yeah. And I think by the time you start to bend it and join it and tie it, that might get slightly clumsy. The electric blue is nice. The electric blue is nice. I agree with you there. Yeah. I do yeah. quite like that yellow. It's interesting and it's fun. Mm. You know, it's well. Uh, your interesting and fun is what I think you need to yeah. do in your house. Anyway, I think we should go and play with a few ideas. And, OK. Yeah. To see how the design might look, Piers creates a timber frame that echoes the shape of the gap next to the staircase. With cord from the chandlery and steel eyelets screwed in at random intervals, the experiment can begin. My instinct was that we should start with the brightly coloured one. But... I, w I thought that might be your instinct to tie over with the brightly coloured one, Piers. I mean, instinct would be to go here, but actually, you know, my, I think, just pick a point and go for it. It's already looking good, isn't it? Yes, it is, actually. Damn, should have got more rope. So the moral is that 12 metres of rope doesn't go very far, and I hadn't realised how much we'd need. You know, it's all a learning experience, Piers. But actually, I suspect for an opening this size, you might need 25 metres. Yeah. But at about a pound a metre, it's pretty good value, isn't it? A turnbuckle device costing just a few pounds tensions the rope. I think because we've got the other colour ropes, why don't we just add in another 12 metres of another colour and just see what it looks like with two colours? With the blue cord also in place, it's time to see how the prototype looks against the staircase. So it goes about here, doesn't it? Wow, that looks great! Heidi and Stephen will need to liaise with building control before finalising the design to ensure it meets all safety requirements. But this test run gets a thumbs up. It's so much better than having a balustrade. I know. Big bits of wood or big bits of metal. And cheaper. Yeah, much cheaper. I mean, 25 quid for the rope. You know, the eyelets were a couple of pounds. I mean, you pay that for just one of these wooden banisters. Yeah, yeah. You know, much more fun. Yeah. That's really exciting. It feels really kind of bright, youthful. You know, it's lovely seeing right the way through it. It's so much more than background. It actually adds character. I mean, it's lovely. You know, when I come back, hopefully you will have done something like this, but even better. I think it's really exciting to begin to see something beyond the building site. And now there are glimmers of bright, colourful things that really reflect your home. I think it was a worry for me, actually, what do you do with the new, this new house? How will it be? It'll be empty, rather than actually we're going to go in and it's going to already have character. And this is actually giving it its character, which is good. months since the frame went up, the joiner and plasterer are working alongside Heidi and Stephen. But there's still a long way to go before the house is finished, and nothing comes easy. Why are all the sockets so far along? What do you mean so far along? That's the only place you can put the microwave. The budget and schedule are being hit daily by setbacks. As well as using second-hand kitchen units, Heidi had planned to economise by fitting a used cooker. My dad's garage flooded and our cooker 
got really wet, so that's going to have to go to the dump. Going to have to also buy a new unit. Didn't have that in the budget. I'm sure you're getting greyer the more you work here. So are you. I've noticed yeah. that. Spending is now at 95,000, and the finances for completing the build are on a knife edge. Heidi has been forced to put over £3,000 on credit cards. I don't think I've got a future as a painter and decorator. And cash flow is fluctuating wildly. With our boiler, we were part of the government scheme that allows you to get an interest-free loan. So that freed up a little bit of money, freed up probably about seven grand's worth of money to enable us to keep going with the project. Today, with the cooker, that was not in the plan. Ah, Andy. Some things are working out a little bit cheaper and some things are working out a little more expensive because things have changed on site. Oh, can you repair that? No. The most important job now is transforming the old kitchen units into a piece of design that'll give character to the living area at minimum cost. The idea of using acrylic sheets went down well. So Piers has brought Heidi to a major supplier for inspiration. I think the overall thing is doing something that's a block of colour down at the end of the room. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, what it needs to do is to take some very ordinary cupboards and somehow repurpose them. And I think using them for fronts is a really good idea. I think using them for the back of the island or the whole island is something that could be explored. There's a vast range of textures, shapes and colours to argue about. You love a lime green. How could he not like that? How could he not want a kitchen made out of that stuff? Because I feel it's going to date. This is a kind of bundle of amazing colours. Look at these amazing colours. Those are rather muted colours. No, they're not muted colours. That's your favourite colour. Well, well, look at that. It's lovely, isn't apple it? Apple green, that's yeah, beautiful. Apple green's nice too. Like emerald, you could have like emerald city. That is beautiful. That it is, is beautiful. It is really clean and bright and crisp. It isn't just the main body of the kitchen and the fronts and the splashback and the island. I mean, there's the handles, there's all sorts of other things. And these rods are fantastic. Look at these rods that... You know, that could be cut down into inch length and just glue it on. It's that simple. And you cut it with a fine tooth metal saw, a hacksaw, and you can sand the end. But it is so beautiful, really, isn't it? And so unexpected and so simple. The acrylic rod is 1.8 metres long and costs less than £12, so could make lots of handles very cheaply. So you could go for, a, like, a solid front with a clear handle. We like the blue. Yeah, we like the blue. It's it's beautiful, really nice. isn't it? Yeah. Parts of the kitchen island could potentially include curved surfaces. Piers and Heidi want to see what's possible. So, can we see this curved into a gradual radius? Yeah, we can get it put in the oven. It will take about 15 minutes to do. To create curves in acrylic, it's heated so it's malleable, and then left to harden over a form that gives it the desired shape. It's a process called thermoforming. Dan, if you took a single sheet of this and bent it to make, say, three shells going down a wall, okay. how much would it cost per bend? Uh, it, it varies on the thickness and the size of the panel. To, to create a shelf of, of your description would probably cost somewhere around um, 75 to 125 quid. The heated acrylic is now flexible enough to go on the form, but it will harden again within two to three minutes. Whether curves will be in the final design is up for debate. If I come back with a curved kitchen, Stephen will not be very happy. You can make a beautiful curved chaise long. <laughs> Having shown Heidi the possibilities, Piers can start designing. That is one colour that does that and I think that will be really easy to do, really easy to make and if you were worried about it scratching you could just put a piece of glass on top of it but I think it is an opportunity to use another amazing colour because as soon as you add something else to that it just really transforms the space. Incredible. Could you do the same colour but in a different texture? Yeah, absolutely. That's a good idea. That as a block of colour would be amazing. Yeah. And that as a piece that was folded up is enough. And I think that's where you probably spend your money. And then you really do just 
use your old kitchen as a backdrop. You don't need to conceal it, you just paint it white and it's fine. When we looked at those rods, you've got that option. If you wanted to pick mm. out a colour, you could use those for handles. Great idea. Yeah. Sold to the woman in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I think Heidi's going to do something really good. I'm not quite sure what she's going to do, but I'm really excited to see what it is. Acrylic delivery. Right. Heidi and Stephen are now battling to finish the family living space that will define their new house. Heidi has ordered £850 worth of acrylic for use in various parts of the house, with transformation of the bland kitchen units the top priority. It's Stephen's first glimpse of what's in store. No, are you not excited? I, I, I am in intrigued. You're intrigued. Yeah. I'm very excited. You're just you're just upset because you didn't go to get, get to go to the acrylic factory. That's why. He didn't get to see all the colours. <gasps> oh wow! That's the shelves. They've chosen green acrylic for the island and shelves, but desperate to save wherever possible, Heidi negotiated a discount by arranging to cover the cupboards in whatever colours the supplier had cheap as offcuts. It's a very brave decision. Oh, oh, purple. Pink, Heidi. Oh, it's exciting. What colour is this one? White. We've got green and yellow. Cool. Happy with that? Happy with the colours? Yeah, I'd like, I'll, I'll see how they are when they're up. <laughs> Next, Stephen deals with the reality of another of Heidi's design decisions. Put the eyelets in there. Put the shoulder. eyelets in there, put the eyelets in there, and then we'll work out. So basically, you may, it's every 14.14. Okay. Pythagoras, that chap, he's dead clever and all that. He knew it. The most demanding job still lies ahead. The kitchen island worktop needs to be cut to fit precisely around an uneven old sink. One slip and one of the most expensive pieces of acrylic will be ruined. You ready? This is the main room, this is where everything happens. It's really important that the kitchen, you know, does something interesting. When it's in your living space, we've got your couch and your fire and everything. You're going to be doing all your entertaining, the family's always going to be around there, so you want to feel proud of that space. Woo! Heidi and Stephen have struggled to find every penny for this build and taken some bold and brave design decisions. The question now is, will it all pay off? Twelve months ago, Heidi and Stephen took the huge decision to try to build a home for their family with a budget of just £70,000. It became a project that pushed them to their limits and brought them to the brink of financial ruin. After months of long nights and early mornings, I'm back to see if they've been able to create a house that really reflects who they are and the way that their family wants to live. Piers and I are returning to see if they've realised the dream of creating a home in an area they thought they could never afford. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Hello. How, How are you doing? doing? Good. How are you? Right. Great Good to, see to see you. you. you too. Look at this. Lovely to yeah. see you. How does it feel to be standing next to a more or less finished building? Feels really exciting. It's uh, it's good to see you nearly there. It's getting to the point where you can start to imagine this is your home. There's a few things left, aren't there, to yeah. finish, and the render is one of those. But For how sure. close are you to finishing the whole thing? The outside is, is pretty close. The render has held us back due to the weather. It's either been too hot or too wet. Well, it's Scotland, it's, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't wait to stay inside. Should we go and have a look? Yes. Let's take a look, yeah. please. This is just such a great space. Sort of sensible, ordered, well planned, and then, but most of all, with this fantastic view. 
And it's so well planned. I mean, your circulation is all to one side, so you're not constantly crossing over. Whereas most house builders seem to think that you add features to make a room better. Here, there's just the space and the light and almost nothing else. There's also this which works because it lets all of this light through, doesn't it? I mean, this is space that you've borrowed from the stairwell and brought it into this room. Yeah, and it does it in an interesting way. I mean, we keep saying that this now feels like a little kind of almost framed piece of, of art in a way. Mm. Heidi's created a unique design for around 400 pounds. The bulk of the cost is the clear acrylic panel, which makes it meet building regulations without compromising the effect. Having been so busy actually building, Stephen's been less involved in the design process and unsure about some of the decisions. Up until pretty much yesterday, still very sceptical about how it's going to work and it's, yeah, I love it. I think it's really good. And this whole sense of, of the moves here just to reveal the staircase to the room, that, yeah. does that work for you? Yeah, well, totally. I, I don't even know why it was never on the plans to begin with. And I think Piers just sort of let that flame under the skull. Oh yeah, that's such a logical thing to do. Stephen has contributed ideas for a design on a shoestring. This timber panel has added a unique piece of history to a brand new house. You've unleashed your inner designer here, haven't you? <laughs> this cladding. Yes. One day we'll, you know, we've got this old tongue and groove from the old house sitting in piles next door, just doing nothing. So we came up with putting it here. This has got life in it. This has got life from the old house. That cost us nothing. The centrepiece of the main living area is a remarkable kitchen. The acrylic came packed in sheets of MDF, so Heidi and Stephen used this free resource to create flat surfaces on the old fronts and then glued the acrylic to the MDF. An old worktop donated by a friend sits above the spruced up cabinets. Well, this part of the house is certainly impossible to <laughs> miss, impossible to ignore, it's so colorful. The kitchen island contains a reclaimed sink housed in a custom-built surround made from leftover timbers. The only major expenses were one sheet of plywood and the acrylic. It must be, it must be great to create a completely unique kitchen. Yep, no one's got a kitchen like this, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this all started from how can you take this kitchen, which was salvaged from somewhere, wasn't it? And how do you put it in pride of place in this room. And what this does, this acrylic, is completely transform this room. I was just gonna paint the cupboards and yeah. then when we could afford something, maybe change the, the doors. You know, the kind of thing that people do. And actually, it wouldn't have made a statement. It wouldn't have done enough. Heidi was in the driving seat when it came to the kitchen design. So what does Stephen think of the results? We didn't have control of what colors were having and I was worried about having Somebody else's choice, weren't Somebody you? else's choice and the colours not working together. And I think, mm, yeah, they do work. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just about. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you may not be 100% convinced about the colours, but the concrete floor that nearly broke Stephen is now part of a bigger design scheme that he actually likes. There's whole sets, there's shiny new, there's old wood, there's rough floor, and it all works together, I feel. It's bigger than maybe we wanted to spend initially, but I think it's made such a big difference. They just make the whole room come alive. Work to be finished includes an upstairs toilet and basin. A full upstairs bathroom was too expensive, so the couple settled on this compromise. Clearly, moving in is still some way off. But how does Heidi feel about the house? I still can't quite believe it's mine. I really can't. I feel quite emotional looking at it. I think I feel more emotional about it when I think about how much Stephen's done. I do. I feel quite emotional. He's actually. been working really I do, hard. I do feel quite emotional yeah. about it. And it's just absolutely fantastic to think that my children will grow up right beside their grandparents. I mean, it's a, it's a lifestyle choice. It's not just about us. It's about the fact that I want to look after my family, my parents, and be close to them as they age. Heidi and Stephen invested a huge amount of time and energy in this build, but it's also been a tremendous financial strain. So just how have things worked out? 
Tell me how much money you had in the beginning for this build and how much you've ended up spending. Well, we had, um, when we first started, and once we'd kind of demolished everything, we had 70 grand. We're now at 98. And the place that's kind of taken us in a year from 70 to 98, we've got 20 grand that we managed to borrow from someone else, another three grand on some credit cards, and we've got the rest of that was our, from our wages, basically. Tell me how much you think you still got to spend in order to get the thing finished. I think it's probably going to take us to about 105 total. Once the build is complete, Heidi and Stephen will get a mortgage on the new house and pay off the one on her parents' house, plus the other loan. <laughs> Having come so far, it's time to celebrate what's been achieved and their sixth wedding anniversary. What do you think Heidi and Stephen wanted a house that reflected their personality and what's good about this house is that they haven't gone mad with features everywhere. They've built a really robust, well-insulated, well-built building and then they've known where in one or two key places to invest time and energy. And that's changed this house from something fairly standard into something that is really full of life and full of energy. Cheers everyone. Cheers. 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 Having put her home on the line to finance it, what does Heidi's mum make of the new house? I think they have built the dream, actually, and it suits Heidi and Stephen, and it will suit their children to grow up here. Mm -hmm. Today, the children get their first look at their new bedrooms. What do you think? Oh my goodness, look at that! Is it good? Yeah. yeah? Is it good? Yeah. Yeah? Children's rooms are given life and colour with a patchwork of wallpaper remnants that cost between 50 pence and three pounds each. And what's in your wallpapers, Wendy? Flowers. Flowers? And what's this? What's up here? What are these? Stripes. Is it what you wanted? Yeah. Rabbity, I'm going to bring rabbit. You're going to bring rabbity in here. It feels just intuitively right that a family should be able to bring up their kids in a place where they grew up and put down roots, in the place where their family has roots. But in Britain today, that's not always easy. High house prices and high land values means that sometimes that's really, really difficult. Heidi and Stephen have taken on that challenge in the only way that was available to them, which is to build their own super low cost house. And I think the result they've got tackles it in fine style. They've created a building that's like a prototype of a low cost house. But they've also found a way for them to put down roots in a community they care about and they want to be part of. And that's a great thing for a work of architecture to achieve. <laughs>